Welcome back to the Junie Smalpy channel. Uh, had a viewer re request for a video. He brought up some pretty good points and just wanted to open it up for discussion, see what you guys felt, and do an episode where we can fill it up with commentary and just kind of look at the issue of the risks to gold ownership or the risks of owning gold. And there's see what you guys think you can throw your input here in the comments and I'll just talk about a little bit of what I've come to realize over the years come to expect and come to deal with uh, as with any investment vehicle as with any asset there's a form of risk there's a degree of risk there's a risk to owning dollars there's a risk to stocks bonds mutual funds uh, your 401k your pension, there's a risk to that. As you saw in Detroit, they got, they had to, you know, take a haircut, if you will. So, I just jotted down quickly some risks to gold ownership. And a couple of them that go back to the beginning of time. Um, the biggest one is theft, obviously. Uh, Thieves can break it in and steal away from wherever it is. Uh, the government can steal it out of a safety deposit box, as we've learned in 1933. Uh, it can be outlawed, banned, called back from its possession in the citizens to, to the king. The king can say, hey, I want to turn in your coins. And you turn them in so they can water them down, um, dilute them. Or like the federal government in the U.S. did in 33, they can just take the coins, give you some cash, and... That's it. You won't see those gold coins again. So there is, whether it's theft of a, a at a just normal level, like, like you would think about as theft, you know, a, a, a crook breaking into your house, or government theft, that is a risk to owning gold. It can be taken, it's something that can be taken away. Where the same thing goes for pensions, right? They can be taken away. Anything can be taken away. Except for your soul, I guess. Um, and as we all know, currency, the value of currency itself can be stolen and taken away, or it can be taken through taxation or inflation. So, anything can be taken away. Loss. Um, just as I can lose this $5 bill, it can fall out of my wallet, fall out of my pocket, into a sofa, couch somewhere, or drop it on the street when I think I'm actually putting it in my pocket, uh, you could lose your gold coins, or your if you walk around with them, if you carry them in a satchel or a bag, there's uh, I guess that's why metal detector guys make such a good little hobby out of it. They get to walk around the countryside and ancient roads and borrow pits and the sides of roads, sweeping their metal detector back and forth and pulling old coins up out of the earth. So there are also the hordes that people find, you know, there's a time of historical instability back in history, whether it's the threat of war, invasion, uh, social unrest. I believe that's why they find so many jars and cans just stuffed full of coins in walls and in below floorboards all over the world. And they find these in France, they find them in England, as far back as the time of the Romans. So people have been stashing gold coins away and hiding them since gold coins existed. Look at the big find that just took place in California. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's like the largest gold coin hoard find um, ever. California couple found it. Ten million dollars in gold coins were buried in a yard. So somebody lost that gold. I mean, there's somebody that in time, somewhere in history, some family lost that gold because it's in those cans now and these people have it. Just horrible if you found out that was your grandparents and they buried a bunch of gold and never told anybody and then passed away. You sold the property and then these people find, you know, seven cans with 1,400 gold coins in it. So gold can be lost. You can lose it for generations, but it always exists. The value will always be there. If I lose this gold coin, the value is just going to be transferred to somebody else if they find it. There is that risk of loss. So theft, loss, and I guess... Loss or theft would be a form of loss, but a little bit different. It's just it wasn't an accident. Taxation uh, in America, there's the drawback, the risk, the the downside. One of the downsides here is 
taxation. Gold's taxed at, I believe, 28%. So it's taxed more than uh, almost any other asset there is, other than like the death tax. And I have my reasons for believing they do that. I, uh, I think anyone would agree with the theory that they tax gold that high to punish people from owning it because they know why you're owning it. It's because you don't have faith in the government, in their fiat currency. It's a threat to government. We're not going to go off on the whole tangent. You know the reasons. But anyways, that is a downside or a risk to owning gold, taxation of it. Another one is it earns no income, no dividend, no interest. It merely reacts to the value of the currency in the economy, the dollar. We'll just say that. And it just reacts to the feelings of the times, the stability of the times. As things are unstable or bad, the value of this gold coin may will rise. And when times are good and the currency is strong, then the, uh, the value of this gold coin will uh, go down. So when times are good, it's not worth as much. When times are bad, it goes up. But uh, when the currency loses value, the, the gold coin will become more valuable. To move gold, you need to physically move it, sell it, transport it. If I want to, if you need, unless you're going to barter with it, which is somewhat illegal according to the Trading with the Enemy Act. If I want to extract the dollars from this, if I want to take it to, if I want to get 1340 or whatever it is dollars in cash, and I have to sell that coin, I have to literally take that coin to some place, either get a check, or get cash. If they give me a check, I gotta go cash it. But it just, there's multiple steps in the process. It's not like the computer. Bitcoin or any your bank account online where you can just transfer funds from like PayPal and eBay into your bank account and this and that and move digits on a screen around. It's a little bit more physical than that. So it takes a little bit more work and effort. And uh, one of the biggest risks I think is for people today, you know, young people, people that are new to the whole stacking mentality or getting into metals and uh, holding metals as a form of savings and wealth preservation is they get in high when everyone's doing it and um, they kind of react emotionally and jump in at a panic because gold's skyrocketing and they buy in really high and then it drops and then the worst situation for these people is as it's dropping is it drops below where they bought in at and then they start to really panic and they lose all form of logic and they go ahead and they sell that gold for the, for less than they what they bought it for taking a loss and then gold turns around goes back up and if they had just and then they realize that they if they had just waited and calmed down they would have not lost anything and and uh, they should they could have just kept it so you don't want to be emotional and get let your let panic take over you gotta kinda have a strong constitution when it comes to owning metals you kinda gotta look past the propaganda the volatility at times and just look at it as a long term investment not even an investment a long term hedge preservation of your wall because if you do get too emotional and panicky, you'll start uh, making bad decisions, dumping gold when you shouldn't, buying gold when you shouldn't, and that's going to really decrease the positive effects that gold could have on you and in your life and, your, and in your financial status. Uh, one of the other big ones is people that accrue debt to get gold or people that have a lot of debt and have gold and they refuse to pay off the debt I guess you could say. Uh, we've talked about this more in the how to save money and buy gold video but there's a risk to people 
you know, not paying bills or accruing debt in other areas of their life in order to own metals. You know, I've seen it. I have, I, I have seen it. Uh, I know individuals or friends that, you know, felt that owning gold was more important than extinguishing debt. I would even put gold on a credit card at times just because. So, you know, you kind of want to steer clear of that. Try to exhaust all the, you know, or get rid of, extinguish the debts that you have before you really push a lot of money into your metals. Um, that way it has the greatest effect, the greatest positive effect on on you. You know, you don't have any liabilities. You just basically at that point have hard assets, gold and silver. If you have some silver. Um, so that's most of the gold risks to owning gold that I have thought of. Uh, of course, there's more that people will, will come up with, and I'm sure put them in the comments. Uh, specifically, a risk I hear a lot from Dow bugs and stock bugs is that owning gold, when you own gold, you've got money sitting there doing nothing that you could have earning money for you and that kind of ties into the earlier statement that it doesn't earn any income or dividends doesn't really pay any interest it just reacts to the as a hedge uh, to the inflation of the currency of the economy in which you reside so people will tell you that oh you've got if you've got ten thousand dollars in gold that's ten thousand dollars you could have in the stock market that's earning dividends and making money for you and that's true it's true but um, that's if you want to do that. If you're comfortable playing the game in the stock market and keeping your eye on your stuff all the time and stocks and bonds and hoping that it makes you money. There's no guarantees there either. Uh, gold's never gone to zero. Gold's never, it's just not going to go to zero. You know, you know, you know that just as well as I do. It's, it's here, it's holding, it holds its value and it's been there for 7,000 years. Um, and that's one of the reasons I choose to own gold. I'm as I'm putting off current pleasures and current things I could own in order to own this gold and lock up the wealth that's in it and put it into the future. Like we've called it before, an, an economic time machine. You're putting money in there now and transporting into the future the purchasing power that you can open up and use then. All right, there's a little quick video on gold today, quick conversation. I'm kind of tired, so it wasn't very, uh, I apologize if it wasn't as energized as we've been in the past. But uh, feel free to join the conversation. Throw your two cents in below. And uh, interested to hear what some of you have to say in regards to the risks of owning gold. It's just a topic, you know, we all tend to overlook at times, but it isn't it's good to discuss. And as you can see, um, it's obviously not risky enough to keep me out of it. Because I do like gold and it's where I prefer to, to park money. For now anyway. And most likely for the rest of my life. All right, Junie Spalpy Channel signing out. Have a good evening. Thanks for viewing as always.